let's go ahead and get started. So lecture 22 today is going to be all about standard form. And I wanted to start it off with a definition of what a linear equation is and what standard form is. So let's get started. All right, definition. Let's do linear equation. Okay, linear equation is an equation, an equation that forms a line. It forms a line when it is graphed. So linear equation is just an equation. All the exponents are going to be one. So there's no twos, there's no quadratics anywhere. It's just a simple equation that is going to form a line when it graphs. And that's why it's called linear equation, because the first four letters give you line, right? So if it graphs a line, you know it's going to be linear. Okay. Let's do standard form. Okay, so when you're graphing a linear equation, you're graphing a line, okay? And when you graph a line, there are a couple forms that you can write the line in. Standard form is going to be AX. I'm going to use a capital A plus BY. I use a capital B equals C. And the C is capital as well. So we're always going to have AX plus BY is equal to C. And this is called standard form. Okay. Now there are a couple rules for standard form. There are a couple of rules. First of all, A, B, and C must be whole numbers. They must be whole numbers. So that means there's not going to be any fractions. No fractions. And no decimals. They have got to be whole numbers. So that's the first rule. A, B, and C have to be whole numbers. And the next rule is A has to be greater than or equal to zero. This means that A cannot be negative. A cannot be negative. So A is either going to be zero or it's going to be a positive whole number like one, two, three, four, so on and so forth. And then the last rule is going to be A and B are not both zero. So they can't both be zero. And think about why that is. If A and B were zero, then you would have zero X, right? You would have zero X plus zero Y equals C. Zero X plus zero Y is equal to C. So why is that so problematic? Well, zero times X would just be zero, right? And zero times Y would just be zero, right? And then you would have that whole thing equal to C. Well, what's zero plus zero? Wouldn't that just be zero? So automatically, C would be zero in that case. And C could be zero, but we just want to have it so that A and B are not both zero. So it's either A is going to be zero or B is going to be zero. They can't both be zero. Okay. 
All right. Now, there are some steps that you want to take when you're doing this, this whole standard form stuff. The first thing that you want to do is get X and Y on the same side. Get X and Y on the same side. That's what you want to start off by doing. Getting X and Y on the same side. Because once you do that, when you have X and Y on the same side, then you'll have the C on the other side. Already done for you, right? So that's important. Get X and Y on the same side. That's the first thing that we're going to be doing for every single one of these problems. And then the second step, what you want to do is you want to get rid of all the fractions. You want to get rid of all the fractions. So how do you do that? We're going to get rid of the denominators. Get rid of denominators by multiplication. By multiplication. By least common denominator. So we're going to get rid of all the fractions. How do we do that? We got to multiply everything by the LCD, the lowest common denominator. Or you can say the least common denominator. Same thing. Least common denominator. That's what LCD means. Okay. All right. I'll leave that up there for a few minutes so you guys can get that. And then we'll get on to the first example. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to take every single question they give me and I'm trying to put it in the form AX plus BY equals C. That's all I'm trying to do. And to do that, we need to get X and Y on the same side first. And then we get rid of all the fractions. Because remember, A, B, and C have to be whole numbers. There can't be any fractions. There can't be any decimals. And the other two rules have to be followed as well. And we'll see how we do that in a few minutes. Okay? All right. My first example is going to be y equals 6 minus 5x. 6 minus 5x. So that's the first one that we're going to do. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get x and y on the same side. So how can I do that? Well, zooming in. We see that y is on the left side already. But the 5x is on the right side. So how can I get that 5x onto the other side? Well, since it's negative, I would have to add it to both sides, right? So we're going to add 5x to both sides. And we'll just see what happens. Okay, so the first thing to do is we add 5x to both sides. We look at the right side, the negative 5x and the positive 5x are going to cancel out. So these are going to cancel out. We're only left with a 6 on this side. But now what do we have on this side? We have 5x plus y. 5x plus y. So now 5x and y, those are on the same side. Good. Now, do we have any fractions? Do we have any decimals? No. We don't have any fractions here. So we're done. This is going to be our answer. Okay. So when we're looking at ax plus by is equal to c, we have 5x plus y is equal to 6. So what's my a, what's my b, and what's my c? Well, 
the A is always going to be the number in front of the X. That's going to be 5. B is always going to be the number in front of the Y. Well, what number is in front of the Y here? It's, it's actually a 1, right? If I don't put the number, it's assumed to be a 1. And then what is letter C? Letter C is going to be 6. So all I had to do was get X and Y on the same side, and then I was done. Okay? Now you can write your answer like this, or you can write it like this with the one in front of the Y. It doesn't matter which way you write it because they're the same answer anyways. So now let's go on to the second example. Let's do eight plus y is equal to three x. Eight plus y is equal to three x. So I've got y on the left side. I've got three x on the right side. But I want to get the y on the same side as the x, right? Because we want to get x and y on the same side. So how do I do that? Well, I can get the y over to this side, but how exactly do I do it? Since I have a plus y, I have to subtract y from both sides. So let's do that. I'm going to subtract y from both sides. So now what happens? The y and the minus y cancel out. So those two are gone. I bring down my 8, my equal sign. And then what do I have on the right side? I have 3x minus y. So now I have x and y on the same side. Good. Step two, are there any fractions or decimals? No. So I'm done. So what's my A, what's my B, and what's my C? My A is 3. My B is going to be negative 1. And my C is 8. So A, B, and C. So that was pretty simple, right? All we're doing is we're trying to get X and Y on the same side. Okay. Let's look at the next one. Okay. Let's do y equals seven over four times x minus six. Seven over four x minus six. So immediately what I wanna do is I wanna get x and y on the same side. If I can do that, then I can start getting rid of the fractions, right? So how do I do this? I wanna get this x over on this side so it can be with the y. That way, this negative six can be by itself on this side. So since this is a positive seven over four x, I'm gonna subtract seven over four x from both sides. So here and here. Remember, I gotta do it from both sides. So what happens? I get negative seven over four X. This Y is positive, so I'm actually adding Y. And then what happens on the other side? Well, these cancel, right? But I still have a negative six on this side. So now I've got X and Y on the same side. All right. Now, are there any fractions or decimals? Yes. What's my fraction going to be? Negative 7 over 4. 
So the question is, how do I get rid of this fraction? I'm going to multiply by the denominator. And since the only denominator I have is 4, I need to multiply both sides by 4, right? So I'm going to put both sides in parentheses. That's what I'm going to start off by doing. I've got both sides in parentheses, the whole thing, right? And I'm going to multiply this side by 4, and I'm going to multiply this side by 4, just to see what happens. That should get rid of the denominator. So what happens on this side? I need to multiply everything by 4. So I've got to multiply this by 4, but I've also got to multiply this y by 4, right? So what happens? Well, these fours cancel. It leaves me with a negative 7x. Because the 4 at the top and the 4 at the bottom are going to cancel out. And then I'm going to have plus 4 times y is 4y equals. So I multiplied everything by 4 on this side. And now, what's happening on the right side? Can you guess what this is going to be? What's negative 6 times 4? That's going to be negative 24. There we go. So now all the fractions are gone. And I could leave it like this. But remember, A can't be negative. A can't be negative. So I've got to flip it back to being a positive. And the way I do that is I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 1. So I multiply both sides by negative 1. Let's see what happens when we do that. So I get positive 7x minus 4y is equal to, well, I got to multiply the other side by negative 1, right? What happens there? You should get positive 24. And now I'm done. My A is going to be 7. My B is going to be negative 4. And my C is going to be 24. Okay. Now, let's look at two special examples, two special examples that I want to look at, and we'll talk about them. The first one I wanted to look at was x equals negative 5, and then the next one I wanted to look at was one-third y is equal to negative one. Okay, so let's look at these two. Now, it's okay if you don't have a y, and it's okay if you don't have an x. Okay, you're just going to have x is equal to a number, and that's fine. So this one even though I don't have a y, I can write it as 1x plus 0y is equal to negative 5. But both of these answers are acceptable because this one is already in standard form. So remember when I said a can be 0, B can be zero, but they both can't be zero. Well, in this case, the number in front of Y is zero, the number in front of X is one, and that's fine. Because as long as I have either an X or a Y, I'm good. Let's look at the next one. Here, I don't have an X. I just have a Y, right? I don't have an X anywhere here. But that's fine, because I still have a Y. Now, if I want to get rid of the one-third, what would I have to multiply both sides by? What would you say I would have to multiply both sides by if I wanted to get rid of this one-third? 
I would have to multiply by the denominator, right? What's at the bottom of the fraction? A three. So I'm gonna have to multiply both sides by three. A three over here and a three over here. So that way, I'll just get y is equal to what's negative one times three, that's gonna be negative three. So I can stop it right there, I'm done. Or I can write it as zero x plus one y is equal to negative three. These two are the exact same answers. All I had to do was get rid of that one third. And that was very easy. Okay, let's look at a couple more examples from the problem set and then I'll let you go. Okay. I think I'm gonna do just two of these problems from the set and then that'll be it. Okay. All right, I think I know which ones I wanna do. Okay, new sheet of paper. Let's do some questions from the problem set. Number two, y equals four thirds x plus six. Four thirds x plus six. Okay, so this time I have a four thirds, right? And what I wanna do is I wanna get x and y on the same side first and then I wanna get rid of all the fractions, all the decimals, they've gotta go away. So how do I get X and Y on the same side? Well, I can get this X over onto this side, but since this is positive, I have to subtract it from both sides. So I'm gonna subtract 4 thirds X on this side and this side, and I'll see what I get. Okay, so they cancel out on the right side. I think that's pretty obvious. So those are gone and I get negative four thirds X plus Y is equal to six. So far, so good. So now I've got X and Y on the same side. And now what do I have to multiply both sides by so I get rid of my fractions. I would have to multiply by the denominator, right? I'm gonna multiply by three. But this time, since it's negative right here, I'm gonna multiply by negative three. And you'll see why I'm doing that in a second. So let's multiply both sides by negative three. Over here and over here. So that way, the negative three and the negative three cancel out, I'm left with a positive four X. Minus three Y is equal to negative 18. And now I'm done. So I've got four X minus three Y is equal to negative 18. That's in standard form because I have AX plus b y is equal to c. My a is four, my b is negative three, and my c is negative 18. Okay. All right, let's look at number six. y equals negative three x minus six. Okay, now for this one, I've got Y on one side, but I need to get the X on that side too, right? So I've gotta get the X and the Y on the same side. So how can I do this? Well, 
since this is a negative 3x, I'm going to add 3x to both sides because what's the opposite of a minus? A plus. So we're going to add 3x to both sides and see what happens. Okay. So the negative 3x and the positive 3x are going to cancel over here. I only have a negative 6. Over here, I'm going to have 3x plus y. I always write my x before I write my y. And in this case, I'm done because I don't have any fractions. I don't have any decimals. And x and y are on the same side like they should be. Okay? And we're going to do one more. We're going to do... Number 10. Okay. 1, 6, X plus 5. So to get X and Y on the same side this time, I've got to subtract 1 over 6X. So let's do that on both sides. So I get negative 1, 6, X plus Y equals 5. Because these are going to cancel out, leaving only 5 on this side. Okay? So now how do I get rid of my fractions? I need to multiply by the denominator. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 6. That'll get rid of that 1 over 6. But I'm not going to use a positive 6, am I? Since this is negative, i got to use a negative 6. So let's multiply both sides by negative 6 and see what happens. I'm going to get a positive 1x, which is just x, minus 6y is equal to negative 30. Done. Okay. So the 6 and the 6 are going to cancel each other out because one's on top, one's at the bottom, and a negative negative 1 is just going to be a positive 1x. So I've got positive 1x, and then I've got to multiply the y by negative 6 too, right? Because I've got to multiply everything in parentheses by negative 6. So I do get negative 6y, and then on the other side, I get a negative 30 because 5 times negative 6 will give me that negative 30. So in this case, A is going to be 1, B is going to be negative 6, and C is going to be negative 30. Okay.